northern Nevada's wilderness was an expansive, desolate landscape where secrets could be buried without a trace. It was the perfect place for a mobster to dispose of a problem, at least, that's what Vito Moretti believed. Vito was a seasoned enforcer for the Martelli crime family, a man with cold eyes and a colder heart. He had made many trips to the secluded woods, each one more routine than the last. On a chilly October night, Vito and his two associates, Tony the Blade Russo and Frankie Knuckles Mancini, were on another grim errand. The trunk of their car held the lifeless body of a rival who had crossed the Martellis one too many times. Just another day at the office, Tony muttered, lighting a cigarette as they bounced along a dirt road deep into the woods. Frankie laughed, his beefy hands gripping the wheel. Yeah, but the overtime sucks. Vito, seated in the back, remained silent, his mind on the task at hand. They reached their usual spot, a remote clearing surrounded by tall, foreboding pines. The three men stepped out, their breath visible in the cold night air. As they began to dig, the forest seemed unnaturally quiet. The usual sounds of nocturnal animals were absent, replaced by an eerie silence that made the hair on Vito's neck stand up. Just as they were about to lower the body into the shallow grave, a low growl echoed through the trees. The mobsters froze, eyes darting around in the darkness. Did you hear that? Frankie whispered, his voice trembling slightly. Probably just a coyote, Tony replied, though he didn't sound convinced. The growl came again, louder and closer this time. Before any of them could react, a massive figure lunged from the shadows, knocking Frankie to the ground. The creature was unlike anything they had ever seen, tall, covered in dark fur, and with eyes that burned with an intelligent rage. Bigfoot! Tony shouted, scrambling to pull his gun. Vito, ever the pragmatist, fired his weapon at the beast. The shot seemed to slow it down, but only just. Another two figures emerged from the woods, just as terrifying and equally enraged. The mobsters were outnumbered and outmatched. Chaos ensued as the mobsters fought for their lives. Frankie, using his immense strength, managed to push the first creature off him, but not without sustaining deep gashes to his arm. Tony, wielding his knife with skill, managed to injure another, but it only seemed to make the creature angrier. Vito fired again, this time hitting one of the Bigfoots in the chest. The creature roared in pain but didn't go down. It was becoming clear that conventional weapons would only go so far. The fight dragged on, the mobsters gradually realizing that retreat was their only option. But just as they began to fall back towards their car, a guttural voice rang out through the clearing. Stop! The mobsters froze, stunned. One of the Bigfoots, the largest of the three, stepped forward. It was apparent now that these creatures were not just beasts, they were intelligent and capable of communication. You desecrate our land with your filth, the creature growled, its voice deep and resonant. This cannot continue. Vito, always quick to adapt, lowered his gun slightly. We didn't know, he said, his voice steady. We thought this place was deserted. The Bigfoot bared its teeth. It is our home. Your dead bring danger and dishonor. An idea sparked in Vito's mind, a desperate, dangerous idea, but their only chance at survival. What if we make a deal, he proposed. The creatures watched him intently, waiting. We won't bury bodies here anymore, Vito continued, choosing his words carefully. But we still have problems that need to disappear. What if we bring them to you, alive? The Bigfoots exchanged glances, communicating silently. Finally, the leader nodded. Alive? Vito nodded. For you to hunt. For sport, for food. No more graves, no more desecration. Just a new kind of offering. There was a long pause, the tension thick in the air. Finally, the leader of the Bigfoot spoke again. We accept. Bring your living problems here, and we will take care of them. With the deal struck, the mobsters retreated to their car, nursing their wounds and counting their blessings. As they drove away, Vito couldn't help but feel a twisted sense of victory. They had not only survived but had potentially forged a powerful and horrifying alliance. Over the next few weeks, the arrangement was put to the test. 
the Martelli family had no shortage of enemies and traitors. Vito and his crew began delivering their living problems to the designated spot in the woods. The Bigfoots were true to their word, hunting and disposing of the men in ways that left no trace. The new routine became almost as regular as the old one. Vito and his crew would abduct their targets, drive them deep into the woods, and release them. The terrified men would run, but they never got far. The forest would come alive with the sounds of pursuit, and the screams would echo through the trees until they were abruptly silenced. The mobsters never lingered to watch the carnage. They didn't need to, they knew the job was done. The Bigfoots were efficient and brutal, and the arrangement worked seamlessly. As the months passed, the alliance between man and beast held strong. The Martelli family's enemies vanished without a trace, and the Bigfoots enjoyed the hunt. However, the moral toll on Vito and his crew was heavy. They had crossed a line, not just in terms of legality, but in terms of humanity. Frankie, who had initially seen the deal as a necessary evil, began to drink more heavily, his conscience gnawing at him. Tony, always the most ruthless, started having nightmares, the screams of their victims haunting his sleep. Vito, ever the pragmatist, tried to compartmentalize his guilt, but even he couldn't escape the occasional pang of remorse. They had made a pact with monsters, becoming monsters themselves in the process. One night, as they were preparing to deliver another victim, a young man who had stolen from the Martellis, Frankie snapped. I can't do this anymore, he said, his voice shaky and eyes filled with tears. We're no better than the beasts. Tony grabbed him by the collar. You think we have a choice? We made a deal, and we have to stick to it. But Frankie was beyond reason. I'm out, he declared, turning to leave. Before anyone could stop him, he bolted into the woods, disappearing into the darkness. Vito and Tony exchanged a glance, realizing the gravity of the situation. Minutes later, the forest erupted with the sounds of pursuit. The Bigfoots, ever vigilant, had caught Frankie's scent. Vito and Tony knew what was coming, but they couldn't bring themselves to intervene. The screams that followed were more harrowing than any before. Frankie, one of their own, was now the prey. When the forest finally fell silent, the reality of their situation hit them harder than ever. The next day, Vito called a meeting with the Martelli family leaders. He explained the situation, omitting the supernatural details. Frankie's gone, he said simply. He couldn't handle it. The family, already aware of the unusual disappearances, accepted the explanation without question. But Vito knew things couldn't continue as they were. In the following weeks, the deliveries to the woods slowed, then stopped altogether. The Bigfoots, sensing the change, retreated deeper into their territory, leaving the mobsters to their own devices. The alliance, while short-lived, had left an indelible mark on Vito and his crew. They had ventured into a world beyond their understanding, and the experience had changed them forever. The forest remained a place of secrets, its dark history known only to a few. Years later, Vito would still wake in the middle of the night, haunted by the memories of those hunts. The screams, the blood, the unholy pact, they were all etched into his soul. In the end, the mobsters had made a deal with the devil, and though they had survived, they paid a price far greater than they had ever imagined. The woods of northern Nevada remained a silent witness to their sins, a reminder that some secrets were better left buried.